Okay, good morning. So uh, we finalized this chapter today because I told you that there is one more section to this chapter, which is differential equation, but it has moved to mat 5. So we will study that there. So that is the final lesson that we uh, will have for this chapter. So if you remember, we started from actually understanding the derivative of different functions. Okay, so up to here, you actually studied it in math. Uh, 3c but last time I added three formulas to this list one was the derivative of sine which is cosine one was the derivative of cosine is a negative sign there was one constraint here do you remember what was that these formulas are only correct if yes if it is in the radian mode and of course we don't know yet the answer to tangent which is a natural question to ask because we usually have three functions we answered two of them but not the third one and then we also answered what is the derivative of ln of x, which becomes 1 over x. Of course, this formula is true if ln is defined, which means that x should be positive. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And then we had some generic formulas, which does not depend to the form of the function, yes? Uh, for example, if I have the sum of two functions, I want to differentiate it, I can differentiate each one of them individually and add them, yes? So we had one, two, three, four generic rule, which this one was the important one. Uh, all of them are important, but this was a little bit technical and we learned about it. And that is the chain rule. Today we want to learn what about these two things. If I have the product of two functions and I want to differentiate it, what is the rule? And if I have the quotient, the fraction of two functions and I want to differentiate, how can I continue that? Okay. And I have written it from the very beginning that don't push this analogy further for this one and that one. So the answer to this is not simply f prime multiplied by g prime. The answer is a little bit more complicated. And the same is true for this one. It is not f prime over g prime. Okay? Uh, but before doing that, let me try to solve a, a little bit example about these things we had before to refresh your memory and then we start the lesson. So this example is just uh, for warm-up from what we learned uh, last time. So I will uh, ask you to differentiate. Okay, so I will start with a little bit more complicated ones. So f of x is equal to sine uh, of x squared plus 2x. So I want to differentiate this function. Okay, so you need to look at the formulas. So the closest formula that you suspect to be able to solve this problem is probably this line, yes? But that is not exactly the, for the function that I have because the formula only works for sine x. But this is not sine x, it is sine of something else. And of course, you already hopefully know the technique, yes? We have to introduce something to be u. Yes, so I hope that you agree with me. This is a good choice of u, yes? Why is that? Because if you do that, you will have sine u. Sine u is comparable with sine x, yes? Do I know the derivative of sine x? Yes, the answer is cosine x. So the formula for sine u, you can pretend that u is the same as x, so it becomes cosine u. There is only one thing that you need to remember because of the chain rule, you have to multiply by an extra u prime, yes? So that's the process that I think, yes? Because this formula, either I have it in my memory or in the table, but then you need to write the chain rule version of it yourself. But that's an extremely simple process. You can pretend that u is x and follow the same rule. The only thing that you have to remember is to multiply by an extra factor of u prime, yes? Okay, so I will do this one here. So sine of u, the derivative becomes what? It becomes cosine of u. So it becomes cosine of u. But I have to multiply it by u prime. Okay, so this I copy and paste, but the process is not finished because I see there is a prime left, but this is extremely simple, yeah? So what happens? It becomes 2x plus 2. 
Yes? So I would prefer to write it on the left-hand side. So it doesn't matter, of course. So I would write 2 x plus 2 multiplied by cosine x squared plus 2x. Yes? Understandable? Okay, so let me give you another example. So number 2. So let me write g of x equals to, for example, uh, so let me write 5 and then let me write cosine to the power of 4 and then I would write of x squared. I put a star here because I see that usually students get confused here. First of all, this 2 is the power of x and when you calculate this expression, you raise it to power 4 and then you multiply it by 5. So that is how you are supposed to read it, okay? Okay, so what should we do? Yes? Not 5. Because you shouldn't be worried about 5, yes? 5 is just a multiplicative constant. So you just constant. So let us write it in detail here. So the first thing that you need to think is that I want to differentiate this function. This function is 5, which is a constant, multiplied by another function. So this means that you don't touch 5, but you concentrate on differentiating the function part. That's what you're supposed to do. But then, of course, this is not exactly in your formula, uh, in your table. So you have to, you have enough experience, hopefully, to use the chain rule. But which part of this function is a good choice for you? Pardon? Cosine. Cosine. Because let me discuss about this. You might think that this is a good choice. But this is not a good choice. Why? Because if you take this u, then this will read cosine u to power 4. Yes? If you take this u in your head, then the whole expression becomes that. This is comparable to what? This is comparable to cosine 4x. Yes? But is cosine x to the power of 4 in my table? No. I have only cosine x. So this means that this choice of u, at least at this stage, is not appropriate. So this means that this is not going to work. Okay? So which one is left to check? As uh, Melvin said, we can now think about taking this to be u. But is this a good choice? Let us check. If I take this u, then I will have u to the fourth. Yes? u to the fourth is comparable to what? x to the fourth. Do I know how to differentiate this? Yes, the answer is 4x cubed. So the answer to this will be what? 4u cubed, but the only difference is that you have to multiply by u prime. So that is the idea. You need to think which one is suitable to take u, and then, uh, and then you, uh, follow the chain. Okay, so let us follow this now. Okay, but this is a, the copy-paste part, so I just write 5. But here, 4, so it becomes 4, u to power 3. This one is the one that I took to be u, so this becomes cosine to the 3x squared. But I have to multiply by what? by u prime, so which becomes cosine x squared prime. Yes, is that clear? So 4 goes down, u to power 3 multiplied by u. Okay, but again, I see that this part is just the copy and paste part. At most, I can multiply these to make it simpler, 20. But the problem is here again. Is this exactly in my table? No. In my table, the the closest one is cosine x, but here I have cosine x squared. So this means that you have to use the chain rule once more. Okay, which choice is good here? Do you remember this, was, this choice was not good in the beginning, but it is the only choice here. 
So why this choice is good? Because let me write it here. If I take this u, it becomes cosine u. It is comparable to cosine x. Do I know how to do this with cosine? Yes, it is directly in my table. So this will follow. I can pretend that u is x, so it becomes minus sine u, but I have to remember to multiply by u prime. Okay, so let us follow this here. Uh, I can do it there. So this becomes, let me multiply these two. So it becomes uh, 20. So this becomes 20. And then I have cosine x squared to the third power. And here I follow this. I put a minus sign. So dot minus. I have sine of u, which is sine of x squared. Uh, this is not finished. I have to multiply it by u prime. Yes? And of course, this is so simple. Let me just do it right away. The answer is what? 2x. And then you multiply everything. There is a minus sign here, a 2 here, and a 20 there. So if you multiply, it becomes minus 40. And then you have cosine x squared to the third power multiplied by sine of x squared oh sorry i forgot to write x here so it is preferable to write x here as well so that is the derivative okay so i will put a yeah i put a star there so it is usually i don't know for some reason students make this wrong Okay, I solve a little bit hard problem. I haven't seen these questions in the book or in the national exam, but I just want to make sure, because if you can't solve this problem yourself, then it means that you really understood the process of differentiation. So let me write sine to the third power of the square root of x squared plus 1. And I want to wait for you, okay? I'm not saying that uh, this is the, I haven't seen questions like this, I think, in the book, but it is possible at this level. So I'll wait for you a little bit. Could you solve it? So this is a little bit hard problem. Not very hard, by the way, but it, it, if you can do it, it means that you really learn the process. Okay, so... So you see, this is a complicated function. I do not have it directly in the table. So I have to start thinking about taking one part of it to be u. So which part is suitable at this moment? Yeah, the whole thing, yes? So again, let me just review one. For example, if you take this one to be u, it is not good at this stage. Because if I take that u, then I will have sine to the third square of u. This is comparable to the sine to the 3 square root of x. But this is not something I have it in my table. So taking this to be u does not work. I don't know. Taking this to be u does not work. Because if you take this one to be u, then you will have sine to the power of 3u. And then this is comparable to sine to the power of 3x. But still, you don't have sine to the power of 3x there. So this is not a good choice. The only choice that is left is taking the whole expression to be u. Yes? Is it good? Yes. Because then it becomes u3. It is comparable to the x to the third. Can I do that? Yes, simply. So I can pretend u is the same as x. So it becomes this. And then I multiply it by u. So the first thing that I will do is here. So h prime of x becomes equal to 3 u squared. But this is my u, so this becomes u to power 2. But this is not finished. I have to multiply it by u prime. This is your u, so you just copy and paste your u and put a prime up there. Okay? This is the first step. The second step, the same thing. You can pretend that this is given to you. So this is just the copy and paste part. So I copy and paste that part. And then I ask myself, how should I do this? 
Again, the same process. Is it a good choice to take this U? No, because it becomes sine of the square root of U comparable to sine of the square root of X, which is not there. So then hopefully you realize this time it is good to take the whole expression here to be U. Okay? So sine U is now comparable to sine X. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, so the derivative of sine u becomes cosine u, but multiplied to u prime. You don't really need to write these blue ones here. There, you can just think about them. Okay, so it becomes cosine of u. So this becomes cosine of u. But what is u? U is this guy. But the problem is not finished. You have to multiply what is your u here, prime. Yes. And now you feel that this is acting like a chain. The loops of the chain are coming one after the other until the, there is no loops left. Okay. Again, can I do this directly? No, because I do not have this directly in my table. But now if I think this to be u, okay, so let me write it here. If I take that that to be u, then it becomes a square root of u. A square root of u is comparable to a square root of x. Do I know how to do this? Yes. It's 1 over 2 square root of x. So this means that this follows the same rule, but I have to multiply by an extra u prime. So this means that I copy and paste everything up to here. Uh, 3. Sine to the power of 2 square root of x squared plus 1, and then cosine square root of x squared plus 1. Then I have to write 1 over 2 square root of u, but the problem is it's still not finished because I have to multiply by u prime. Yes. So you see that I am doing it over and over again. But finally, this is so simple that I can do it in my head. It is 2x. Yes. So let me write 2x on top. The, f the process is finished. You can stop there, but you can simplify something. For example, these two in the denominator and that two are cancelled. And if you don't mind, let me write x here and put everything like this in the numerator and this in the denominator. But of course, that is just a minority. So you just write square root of x squared plus 1, 3. I put that x here. Then I copy and paste what is left here. So if you really could do this problem, it means that your understanding about the chain rule is perfect. What level would this top problem? Uh, according to the book, uh, your book, it would be a, I don't know, level one plus or something, because I haven't seen these type of questions. But that is not very hard, you can analyze. Okay, let me also give you one example from the logarithm function, and then we end this example, which was a review of what we had, and then go answer those three question marks today. Okay, so uh, let me write one more here, number four. So let me write k of x equals to, so I would write ln uh, of sine x. So let me write ln of cosine x. Okay, so you tell me, what should I do now? So you, the first thing that you think, is it directly in my table? If the answer is yes, just use it. If not, you need to think about other rules, mainly chain rule, okay? So what do you think I will take as u? First of all, is it understandable? x is an angle, cosine of x becomes an angle, uh, sorry, becomes a number, cosine of that angle, and then you are taking ln of that number. Let us assume that cosine of x is positive, because otherwise ln does not work. Okay, so what should I write? So yes? Cosine x as u. u. Why this is a good choice? Because if I take this u, ln of u is comparable to ln of x, the derivative of ln of x is in my table directly. It's 1 over x. So the derivative of ln of u becomes 1 over u, but you have to multiply by u. Yes? So this becomes what? This becomes 1 over u. So it becomes 
the k prime x becomes 1 over u, which is x cosine x, but I have to multiply by the derivative of cosine x. Yes? And then what is the derivative of cosine x? It is directly in my table. I don't know anything. If you see, it's minus sine x. So here I continue. It becomes 1 over cosine x multiplied by minus sine x. You can stop there, but I prefer to simplify it a little bit because minus sine x goes into the numerator and then cosine x. And then what is this? Minus tangent. So that is preferable to simplify if possible. So the derivative of ln of cosine x is minus tan of x. Okay, so that is enough. Let us go now to the new lesson. Any questions here? The new lesson, let me write the formulas first. The proof for the formula of the product rule is a little bit involved, so let us not distract you now. Let us learn how to use it, and at some point we come back and try to prove it. Okay, so the formula is, let me write the, chain, uh, the product rule. So the product rule. Okay, so the product rule tells you that if you have a function f multiplied by another function g and you are interested to differentiate, okay, so then it becomes the derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one itself plus the first one itself multiplied by the derivative of the second. So that is the formula for the chain group, uh, sorry, for the product rule. You will have it in the formula sheet. Okay, so now I will actually clean this and write the formula here. Okay, so this becomes f prime g plus f g prime. You might think that, do, we, do you think that we really need it or not? Do you really think that we need the product rule after? Because you see that you can uh, differentiate fairly complicated functions. Can you give me a simple example, very simple example, as much as you can, so that we cannot do it if we don't know the product rule? Give me a function as simple as possible so that this rule is really needed. The rules that we have learned so far is not enough to differentiate that function, yes? X times cosine of x. Yes. So you see, x times cosine of x is a good example. So if I ask you, differentiate this function, we cannot do it. Yes, what, how can we do it? Because this is the derivative of x I already know, the derivative of cosine I already know, yes? So it doesn't need the chain rule. But on the other hand, this function is not directly in the, in the table. So it is not composed of two functions. It is the product of two functions. So even if we have learned so many things about differentiations, this simple function we cannot differentiate unless we know this rule. Okay? So let us just use your example here. So let me write example. Now this is today's lesson. Okay? Differentiate. So differentiate number one, so f of x is equal to x times, of course sometimes to give you a hint I put this dot there, it's, the reason is that of course you shouldn't be, sometimes the dot is not there, you need to understand yourself, that's a product, because there is always this mistake that the students take the derivative of that and take the derivative of this using the table, it's minus sine x, and write this as the answer. But if you think that you will make the same mistake, write it and cross it over, so that's not working here. Okay, so that's a product. So how should I do that? If I want to take the derivative of a product, I have to take the derivative of the first one, but multiply it by the second one itself, plus the other way around, yes? So I should do this. So let me write all the details. You can do it in your head, of course, but let, us, let me write everything. I take this one, take the derivative of the first one, 
but I multiply it by the second one itself. And then plus, I take the first one itself, multiply it by the derivative of the second. Okay? And then you have to continue until there are no primes left here. So, of course, this is extremely simple. So, what is that? This is just 1 times cosine x. And then the derivative of cosine, if you see the table, is minus sine. So, if you don't mind, let me put the minus sign here, and then I have x sine x. So, the derivative of this function is not simply this. That's wrong. Derivative is a little bit more complicated. So, is that clear? Okay. So, that's it. I mean, that's not a very big problem here. So, number two, uh, f of x, let me write, for example, very simple one. Let me write x e to the power of x. So I hope that you understood and that we couldn't solve this simple function. We couldn't differentiate this function if we didn't know about the product. There is no way that I can differentiate this. But now we can. How should I do that? The derivative of this becomes the derivative of the first function. By the way, let us make it more interesting. So let me write power 2 here. Okay? So prime and then multiply e to the power of x itself, but plus the first one itself multiplied by the derivative of the second one. Yes? Okay, then you continue one step more. The derivative of x squared is 2x. You have e to the power x, but plus, what is the derivative of e to the power x? Coincidentally, the function itself. So it becomes x squared e to the power of x. You can stop there, but if you want, you can factor, for example, e to power x out from the right-hand side to make it more beautiful, of course, that x from the left side. Then it becomes 2 plus x. This, this last part is not mandatory. If you multiply things back, it becomes the same. Okay, for example, let me uh, write one more. Okay, number three. So let me write f of x to be So 5x to the power of 2 ln of x, and then plus, let us write x e to the power of x to the power of 2. Okay, so this problem, I intentionally write all the steps. If you can... Uh, do some, some parts in your head, it is better to do it. But let me just, for your understanding, let me write all the steps. Okay, so all the steps. I am exaggerating. You really don't need to write so many things, but I want to review exactly what we are doing. Okay? So, my goal is to differentiate this. Okay, can you tell me which rule first I use? What? Addition rule, yes? Because now you see that this is the sum of two functions, before thinking about the details of the problem, I, rem I remind myself about this rule, yes? So what I do, I will continue and take the derivative of the first one plus the derivative of the second one, okay? And which rule do you think I will use here first? Uh, yes, multiplication by a constant here. Yes, so I don't care about the constant, and I only care about this. And then here, let me just copy and paste it here. Yes, so you don't really need to write all these things. You can immediately think in that way. You can just ignore writing so many things. But here, which rule is applicable? The product rule, yes. 
So the product rule becomes, so you have to copy and paste this five, and let us do the parts we can do in our head. So you take the derivative of the, let me write this, okay, the derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one plus the first one multiplied by the derivative of the second one, okay? The same story here, that's also a product. So it becomes the derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one itself plus the first one itself multiplied by the derivative of the second one, yes? Okay, but what is this one? It's extremely simple. So it becomes 5, the derivative of this is 2x, and then I have what? ln of x. What is the derivative of this? It's 1 over x. If you multiply it by x squared, 1x and 1x are simplified, so what is left for me? Just 1x. But here, what is this now? 1 e to the power of x squared. Okay, now, how can I do the, this one? For that very uh, last one, I need what? Chain the chain rule. Okay, so it might be a combination of all these problems in one problem, yes? Why is that? Don't get confused. I told you, train your brain. When you want to th uh, solve this problem, ignore everything else. Then it becomes more transparent, yes? So it seems that the problem is just simply this. Okay, because... Of course, I solve every problem up to that point, then I want to solve this one. I think usually novice people actually still get involved in all the problem, but that is not. Now your problem is only to solve that one. Could you solve this one before? This is an E-level question in the chain rule, yes? So what do you take as U? Yes, why you should use the chain rule? Because E to the power of X to the power of 2 is not in my table. Okay, so then I take this in my head to be u, then I have e to be u, e to the power of u comparable to e to power x, the derivative of this one is the same, because I have it in my table, so this derivative becomes the same, but I have to multiply by u. Okay, so what is the answer here? It becomes e to power u, but multiplied by x. But that one is what? 2x. So this is... So let me write it here. It becomes 2x e to the power of x squared. I will take this and put it here. But there is another x here, which will multiply it here, so it becomes 2x squared, yes? e to the power of x squared. That's it. If you want, you can multiply 5, up, five in and get rid of the pair of brackets, but that is enough. Is that understandable? So your function might be a combination of all of them. By the way, one question. Do you think that is this one is also a product rule? Oh, we didn't need the product rule to understand this. But can you understand this based on the product rule as well? Yes? Yes, yes. If you think it's yes, because you can pretend that CF, that's also a product. If I ask you, use the product rule to do this, which of course you don't need because we already know what to do, but let us see what happens. The derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one plus the first one multiplied by the derivative of the second. But because this is a constant, the derivative of the constant is zero. So this is gone and what is left is exactly what we used to uh, use so far. Okay, So that's also a special case of a product rule but it was easy to convince ourselves about it before. But the product rule is a little bit hard to prove, okay? Any questions so far? You should have a question. What is your question? Think about and find an appropriate question. There is a natural question at this moment you need to ask me or yourself. No questions? Yes? Division is the next step. I will know about the product. There should be a natural question at this point. What happens if? 
No, that is all. You can solve it. It doesn't matter. Yes? What's happened if more than two functions? Yeah. Is, isn't it natural? Because I wrote the product rule for the product of two functions. But you might ask, is it possible, for example, for me to give you this function, x sine x times e to the x. So that's the product of more than two functions. But the product rule that I wrote on the board works only for the product of two functions. Then you might ask, okay, how can I solve this one? Because that's also not complicated. The derivative of x we know is 1. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we know the derivative of each and every, each and every factor of this. And there is no way that I can use the chain rule because I already know the derivatives. But on the other hand, I cannot use this formula. So what is your suggestion for me? Yes? Maybe combine two of them into one. One? That is always the trick. So if I know the rule for two, that is exactly telling me the rule for three. But the product of three numbers, you can combine them I don't know, and give them the name of capital F. Then it becomes capital F, whatever it is, multiplied by another function. So even though it's a product of three functions, but you can view it as the product of two functions. Okay? And then continue. But before doing that, instead of doing it for this special case, let us discover this a little bit more rigorously. So let us say that I have three functions, F, G, h, and then I want to take the derivative. So as you said, I combine these two in my head and call it capital F. And then don't look here. You have this black F and the blue H. So how many functions you see? Two. Okay, so then you can use the product rule, which is adapt, uh, suitable for actually the product of two functions. So this becomes the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function itself plus the first function itself multiplied by the derivative of the same function uh, the second function but now if it was something that you brought in you have to switch back to your old uh, names so what should i do instead of capital f i put f dot g but then on, on top of that i have a prime and then i copy and paste this part and instead of capital F, I put F dot G. And then after that, I have dot H prime. Yes? But then, can I use the product rule for this one? Yes, because now this is also the product of two functions. So what happens? I open a pair of brackets. I copy and paste this H. I copy and paste everything after that. Then I concentrate on doing this one. But that is exactly what you see on the board. So it becomes f prime g plus f g prime. And then I multiply h in. So it becomes f, f prime g h plus f g prime h plus f g h prime. So that would be the answer. Okay, and I hope that now you can see that you can generalize this idea. What do you think will happen if I have f g h k prime? What do you think? You see, at each step, I take the derivative of one, keep the other ones intact, and then add them up. So here I will follow the same pattern. So I will take f prime g h k, and then I would write f g prime h k, then I would write f g h prime k, and then finally I write f g h finally k. So the product is simple. So now everything is ready if we want to answer this. Okay, so let us just do this one as well. So here, if I give you f of x equals to x sine x e to the power of x. So usually it is better to put e to power x here. Okay, of course it doesn't matter, but the risk of making mistakes becomes less. Okay, so if I want to differentiate this, you really don't need to do it step by step. You can use this rule immediately. So I take the derivative of the first one, but I copy and paste the other two. And then I move the prime sign to the middle one, 
leave the first one and the third one the same. And then finally, I move the prime sign to the last, keep the first one and the second one the same. Yes? And then I can uh, continue. So the derivative of x is just simply 1. The derivative of e to power x is the function itself. So it actually generates the function as one single term. And the derivative of sine, you can see the table is cosine. So it becomes x e to power x cosine x. Yes? Okay, so that is the product rule. But there is one rule left, and that is the quotient rule. So let me clean this and write the quotient rule here for you. So this will answer the second question mark. Okay, so we want to write the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, I will write it here. So it becomes the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator itself minus the numerator itself multiplied by the derivative of the denominator and finally divided by the denominator to power 2. So the quotient rule is not a very nice formula. So it is possible, if it is possible to avoid it, I recommend you to avoid it. I will review a little bit what I mean about avoiding it. But this is in the book, is a level 3 problem to prove this rule. So let us go through this, why this is true. But of course we have to take the uh, product rule as granted. Okay, so let us assume that we know why the product rule is true. And this is a level 3 question in the book that prove it. But in the book, instead of f and g, they have written a u of x and v of x, the last problem. So they want you to prove the quotient rule for this. Okay. Uh, let us see, because of course it is understandable that the quotient rule has something to do with the product rule. Why? Hmm? No, so every division can be viewed as a multiplication. Yes, so if you have a number a, 2 divided by 3, you can view it as division, but you can also view it as 2 times 1 over 3. So, because every quotient is actually also a product, so it is not that surprising that there is a connection between this rule and the previous rule. Yes, this is something that's understandable. Okay, but how should we do that? Okay, so this is a level 3 problem. I can see which problem is that, then I will write it. Okay, but I would write proof. Why do you think this is correct? So what we do, we take this one, f over g, and prime. So according to what I said, you can view this as a product in the form of 1 over g. Do you agree? But 1 over g can also be written as g to power minus 1. So this becomes f times g to the power of minus 1, totally prime. But can I use the product rule now? Yes, because I have the product of two functions. One of them is f. The other one is a little bit different in looking, but that is also a function. This is the inverse of g. And then I want to differentiate. So I erase that one, but the, uh, the product rule is there. The product rule tells you that. Take the derivative of the first one, but multiply it by the second one itself, plus take the first one and multiply it by the derivative of the second. Agree? But here I do not have any problems. That is just f prime. This is g to power minus 1. We can just bring it down back again. So I'm writing f prime over g with power 1. I made it positive when I brought it in the denominator, but I really don't need to put 1 there. So this expression can be written like this. Yes? And then after that I see a plus. I see f. The only thing that you need to tell me how to do 
is to take this part. So how do you think I will take the derivative of g to power minus u? Uh, sorry, minus 1. So you, I'm sure that you know it, but because I have changed the name of the letters, you might be yes. Take g as u. G as u. Yes. You take g as u in your head. The chain rule. Is it a good choice? Yes, because this becomes u to power minus 1. This is comparable to what? X, x to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over x. Do I know the derivative of this? If you see, one of the, those blue ones is minus 1 over x squared. So what happens to this one then? It becomes minus 1 over u squared, but I have to multiply by u. Yes? So this means that I will follow this rule here. There is a minus sign here, so I put a minus sign. And then 1 over u to the power of 2. But u was g, so it becomes g to power 2. But then I have to multiply by u prime, but u is g, so u prime means g prime. Yes? That's it. And what is left to me is just taking the common denominator. But before taking the common denominator, let me organize this a little bit. So I would write f prime over g. There is a plus. I am multiplying three factors. One of the factors is negative, so it becomes negative. And then what happens? f multiplied by 1 multiplied by g prime. So it becomes f g prime. And the denominator is g squared. Yes? But now I have two fractions. I want to take the common denominator. So what can I take as the common denominator between these two? G squared. So g is being rescaled by a factor of g. So I have to rescale its numerator by the same factor. So it becomes f prime g. Yes? And then minus this will left alone because this is g squared. That's also g squared. So it becomes f g prime. And that is exactly the formula that I wrote up to. So that was the proof. So the proof of the quotient rule goes through the proof of the uh, uh, goes through the two rules: the quotient rule, uh, sorry, the chain rule and the product. And of course, one of those blue formulas up there. But anyway, this is not a very nice formula. It's not very friendly because it is complicated. So let me start with some functions. For example, so let me write an example. Differentiate. Okay, so what happens now here? Number one, let me write a very simple function. Okay, so let me let me do this one using the quotient rule. Can I use the quotient rule for this one? Yes, because that's also a quotient, but of course a very simple quotient. Okay, uh, I want you to understand that if you can avoid the quotient rule, it is better to avoid it. For example, if I ask you to do it, I prefer to bring it up and differentiate. That would be faster. But if you insist, you can use the quotient rule. Okay? So I would say that f prime of x is equal to. So how the quotient rule reads? It tells you take the derivative of the numerator, multiply it by the denominator itself, minus the numerator, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator and the denominator to power yes that is the same rule that i use but of course it is not preferable to do it in that way but if you do it is completely correct the derivative of one is zero when i multiply this is gone and the derivative of x is one when i multiply it by minus one it becomes minus one so it becomes minus one over x Okay, even though the quotient rule, so let me write Q rule, is not preferable. Yes? 
because I could do it faster. Yes? Okay, but sometimes it is uh, inevitable. For example, number two, let me give a very simple example. So f of x equals to x over x plus 1. So I want to do it. So you see that's a quotient. And it seems that I cannot avoid it. So what I do, I will take the derivative using the quotient rule. So the derivative is what? You see it on the board, yes? So you have to interpret it. So the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator itself minus the numerator itself multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, the whole expression, and then divided by the denominator, whatever it is, totally to power 2. So the first thing that I did, I just wrote the formula here. And then I have to continue until there are no prime left. So the derivative of x is simply 1, so it becomes just x plus 1. The derivative of x plus 1 is also 1. When you multiply it by minus x, it becomes minus x. And then you have this to power 2. Differentiation is finished, but because this is simple, I can write it as 1 over x plus 1 to the power of 2. Yes? So that was a very simple example. So, But now, do you remember, let me test your memory. So if I, if I write this one for you, f of x, let me swap these two. And I ask you the same question. Can I use the quotient rule here? Of course I can. That's a quotient. Yes? So let me just do it. But quotient rule is not preferable. Even matrices students can do this. I told you in the very beginning that we started differentiation. So here, if I ask you what is the derivative of f, what happens? It becomes the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator itself minus the numerator itself multiplied by the derivative of the denominator and the denominator is squared. So what will happen? The derivative of this one is 1 times x minus x plus 1. The derivative of x is 1. And then divided by x squared. And if you open up the pair of brackets, so this becomes minus x will cancel that x. Minus 1 is left in the numerator divided by x squared. So if you do it in that way, that is totally acceptable. But what is preferable here to avoid, if possible. And here we can avoid. Do you remember how? We had this before. So if you have one single expression in the denominator, use this rule that this can be written as this divided by that, which is 1, and this divided by that, which is 1 over x. Instead of going through these long calculations, now if I ask you what is the derivative in this form, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 1 over x is just minus 1 over x squared. And this answer is exactly the answer that you got from the complicated version. So that is what I mean by avoiding the, uh, the quotient rule if possible. So uh, some fractions, some functions are written in the form of a fraction of involved expressions, but you can view them as simpler uh, expressions that we already know how to differentiate. Yes? Okay, let me give you one more example and then finalize this. So let us just write the tangent because now hopefully you know what is the answer here. So do you see the uh, relation between this rule and the derivative of tangent? Because tangent is just the quotient which is sine x over cosine. So I can take that one as an example, but to make everything complete, let me just write this formula here. So f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared, okay? So let us take the next example to be the tangent itself, that we can actually have two birds with one stone. We can also complete that uh, question mark. Okay, so let me write number four. 
f of x is equal to tangent of x. Okay, if I want to differentiate it, so the first thing that I do, I write it as a fraction. And you know that tangent is just sine x over cosine x. Okay? And now I differentiate. The uh, pro, uh, quotient rule tells you that take the derivative of the numerator, multiply it by the denominator itself, minus the numerator itself, multiply it by the derivative of the denominator, and then divide it by what? Divided by? Denominator squared, which is cosine x to power 2. But the process is not finished because we have two primes left. But these are extremely simple. They are directly in my table. So what is the derivative of sine? It is cosine. But I have another cosine here, which are being multiplied. So it becomes cosine x to power 2. Yes? And then the derivative of cosine, if you see the table, is minus sine. So I have to multiply this minus sign by that minus sign. So it becomes positive sine x to power 2. And then, of course, I have the denominator cosine x to power 2. But then, accidentally, something very familiar occurs. So what is the numerator? It's a famous uh, trigonometric identity. It's 1. Yes, it's always 1. So it becomes what? 1 over cosine x to the power of 2. So then, today, I will also complete this question mark. So the derivative of tangent is 1 over cosine x squared. Yes? So this is the complete version of the tables that you are supposed to have. When you go to university, you will know you will not have any other rules added here, but you will have a lot of different functions added to the table. So the general rules are finished, but these are the general rules for differentiations. But the derivative of different functions that you study later, you can add them into that list. Yes. Are the blue ones the ones that multiply formation? Yes, they are not. Yes. So you have so these three. If you don't have it in your memory, you have to take this from this all over again. But I think it's better, at least for the day of the exam, try to memorize those. Uh, okay, any questions? Uh, so, do you remember I wanted to say something, then I deviated from that, yes. Okay, so I wanted to give you one more example. Okay, so let us do one more example and then we end. Okay, so number five. I want to wait for you to do it. Okay, so let us, this is simple, but I see, I can see that these type of, uh, these type of problems in the book. So number five, I wait for you, okay? Uh, f of x is equal to x squared divided by square root of x squared plus 1. Okay? i wait for you. You do it, then I will solve it, and then we are finished. Okay. Uh, I, could you solve it? Yeah, I mean... Simplification might be a little bit uh, harder for you, but you don't need to simplify if it is not necessary. Anyway, I will do it and I will simplify it so that you get some experience of how to do it. But doing it is not hard. First of all, do you see that quotient rule is needed here? Why? Because that's a quotient rule. That's a quotient. And it is not one of those that I can avoid. It's always a quotient, okay? So I will start with the quotient rule. I put the formula in front of me and I read it in words, not just formula, okay? So the quotient rule tells me if you want to differentiate a quotient, take the derivative of the numerator and then multiply it by the denominator itself minus the numerator itself and then multiply it by the derivative of the denominator 
and then take the denominator and square it. This is the writing of the formula. This part is extremely simple. It is just 2x, and then I have to multiply it by this. The denominator part is also simple. What is that? You have a square root, and then you are squaring it. So they will cancel, and then I am left with x squared plus 1. And minus x squared, that's also simple. But what do I need for doing this? I have a square root of something. The closest formula that I have in my table is a square root of x. So it motivates me that I have to use which rule? Chain. The chain rule. But I will take this one u in my head. It's a good rule because it becomes square root of u. It's comparable to square root of x. I already know what this is. So that will be the same, more or less the same thing, but you have to multiply by an extra u prime. Okay, so I will multiply it. Two square, 1 over 2 square root of u, so it becomes 2 square root of x squared plus 1, but multiplied by u prime. But u prime is so simple, don't write it so much. Okay, so what do you write? Simply 2x. This is the derivative. It is finished. But if you don't mind, let us try to simplify it. If differentiation is needed, that's enough. But if you want to simplify, let us do that. First of all, I see that these two and that two are gone. Yes? And this x will be multiplied by 1, will be multiplied by x2, it becomes x cubed. Yes? So I copy and paste this part. And then it becomes minus x cubed divided by what? Square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1. Usually, if you have a fraction and you have another fraction in the numerator or denominator or both, it is better to get rid of these uh, partial fractions. Of course, this is good enough. You can stop there. But how should I get rid of this fra fraction? I rescale everything by this factor so that I can get rid of it. Okay? So what happens if I multiply this by that factor? This becomes x squared plus 1, yes, because this will be multiplied by this once more, so it becomes x squared plus 1. So I will have 2x, x squared plus 1. But then when I rescale this by that factor, the denominator vanishes, I am left with minus x cubed. But of course, when I multiply the numerator by that factor, I have to multiply the denominator by the same factor as well. Yes? And let's do some simplification. If I multiply 2x in, it becomes 2x cubed, but minus x3 becomes 1x cubed. And then I have 2x. Yes? And might be you see in the book, either they write it like this, or they write it as x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Yes? So usually in the books, they write this as the answer. Is that understandable? Because if you have x to the power 2 plus 1, this can be written as x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half. This means to the power of 1. So I would write it as, and I combine the powers, it becomes 3 halves. So differentiation, today's lesson is finished at this blue line. The rest of it is simplification. Sometimes it is needed. For example, if they ask you to find the maximum and minimum of this function, you have to differentiate and put it equal to zero. If you don't simplify it, you want to put this equal to zero, then you will be in trouble in the next step. So if differentiation is what is needed, simplification is not that important. But if you differentiate and you're supposed to do something with your derivative, then simplification matters, because putting this equal to zero is much simpler than putting this into equal to zero. Okay, any questions? So we will stop here, thank you.